أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وموالا أما بعد إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله سيدنا بارك وسلم صل عليه الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله Over the course of the centuries in the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam there have been great people and it's because of these people that the message of Islam spread. And many of you know these people. In the Indian subcontinent we had Mia Muhammad Bakhsh, Allama Iqbal, Rahimahumullahu Ta'ala. Do you know through their poetry and through their words, what did they explain? All of their poetry was just an explanation of the Quran. That's all it was. And inshallah, today we'll speak about the wise words of another figure. And many of you need to know his name. And his name was Ibn Ata'illah, Rahimahullahu Ta'ala. Ibn Ata'illah has a book called the Hikam. And I would advise every single one of you to purchase this book. I'm sure this book has been translated into English. This is one of our treasures that we have as an ummah. Many of you have heard of Shikwa, jawab shikwa by Iqbal. Many of you are aware of Saiful Muluk by Mia Muhammad Bakhsh. Many of you are aware of the poetry of Imam Ahmad Rida Khan Rahimahullahu Ta'ala Do you know this poetry Even though many people may think It's only poetry But for us The people who understand It's a means for us to come closer To our religion And subhanallah These great people they achieved this And one of the people that came before them Was Ibn Ata'illah And he has a book called The Hikam and the ulama of Islam mentioned that if something other than the Quran was ja'iz to read in the salah, it would be the hikam of Ibn Ata'illah. This is the greatness of this book. This is how many pearls and treasures are in this book. And many of us sometimes, we do look for a deeper meaning. Some of us may be engrossed in sin. Some of us may be engrossed in tribulation. Sometimes you need to hear these words of wisdom so it can enlighten your iman. And I just want to touch upon one segment of the hikam. Many of us, we go through tribulations, we go through trials, but one of the biggest trials that you can face as a Muslim is to ponder over your own sins. Even if you are in a state of obedience, Sometimes you think about your sins and it demotivates you. You think even if I'm in a state of obedience now, when I'm in my 50s, what about when I was in my 20s? What about when I was in my 30s? There's things that I did in my life that many people around me, they do not know. And sometimes it's because of these, this feeling and these kind of feelings that people are discouraged. It demotivates them, it makes them sad. And when people ponder over their life and they think about their dealings and they think about certain moments and how many of us, we have those moments where we think if only I could change that moment, if only I never did this certain act, even if that was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and this is, some of the things that we reflect on 
as human beings, as time moves on, we become more wise. We abstain from certain things. Why? Because we are always developing as human beings. This is who we are. These, these are the tribulations that we have to go through. And Allahu Akbar, Ibn Ata'illah, he describes this perfectly. And I want even those of us who are in a state of disobedience to listen to these words of Ibn Ata'illah. The great Imam, he says, Rubbama waradati dhulm alayka liyuqaddira ma manna Allahu bihi alayka. The great Imam, he says, sometimes, do you know these dark moments that you've had in your life? You've had these moments, why? So that when you are in a state of obedience, you recognize the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put on you when you are in that state of obedience. It's a blessing of Allah, being in His obedience, praying salah, being good to your parents, understanding Islam and the Quran, it means you are in a state of obedience. But sometimes you may wonder, what about my dark past? Sometimes Allah Almighty, He has given you that dark past so that you realize the blessing that you are in. Believe me, brothers, there's some of us, alhamdulillah, they've been pure their entire life. Never have they gone anywhere near sin. Never have they done anything which is maybe even haram. And this is the blessing that Allah Almighty has upon them. But sometimes they do not realize the blessing of obedience. They don't recognize the blessing of salah. Why? Because they've never been through those dark moments. And Ibn Ata'illah is saying, sometimes you've gone through those dark moments so that when you are in a state of obedience, you realize the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the blessing that you have. That's why. So don't think all the time, what about my dark past? What about my misdemeanors? What about my sins? What about the dealings I've had with people previously? You can put all of those things right while you are still alive. But the main thing is that you realize that there was a reason why you went through those dark moments. There was a reason why you went through that suffering. And many brothers are going through that suffering now. They are many. Allahu Akbar. They want to be in a state of obedience. And they are dying inside. Even whilst they are doing haram, it's killing them on the inside. They want to be removed from this state of haram and they want to come in a state of obedience. And this is why this is the bl it's a blessing in disguise. Sometimes you have those dark moments. You have those dark times so that you recognize that when you are in a state of obedience, that this is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know Ibn Ata'illah, his teacher was Abu al-Abbas, Al-Mursi, rahimahullahu ta'ala, buried today in Alexandria. And Abu al-Abbas, radiyallahu an, he says, every servant is in one of four states. There is no fifth. You're in blessing, either you're in blessing, or you're in tribulation, or you are in sin, or you are in obedience. And Ibn Ata'illah rahimahullah, he was hearing his teacher Abu al-Abbas say this. And Abu al-Abbas al-Mursi rahimahullah, he says, all of these four situations have a specific response. He says, if you are in a state of ni'mah, then be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyiduna Sulaiman alayhi salam, many of you know he was given the entire kingdom. And what did he say? You know, everything I have been given, it's a test for me. In reality, it's a tribulation for me. Am I grateful? Or am I an ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So those of you who are in a state of blessing, then your response is to do shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Abu al-Abbas al-Mursi rahimahullah, he says... If you are in tribulation, then your response is sabr. Subhanallah. My brothers, what can I say about the world today? 
Look at the Muslim world. The Muslim world is burning. We keep on saying these countries, but some of us are still in ghafla. If you want to look again, then just look at the TV again. Look at Palestine again. Look at Yemen, the worst humanitarian crisis. Ibn Ata'illah, by the way, is from Yemen. The worst humanitarian crisis. Look at the Muslims who are in this tribulation. But then, on the day of judgment, you know, these people in tribulation, those who weren't in tribulation would look at these people and they will say, if only I was skinned alive on this earth. That's how much reward they have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know these people in tribulation? Don't feel sorry for them. This is a test from Allah for them. Be happy for them. Why? Because in the afterlife, they are going to see the rewards of those tribulations. And there's a wisdom behind every tribulation. Believe me, there's a wisdom behind every single tribulation that someone goes through. First of all, it's a sign that you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And second, it may be that that person is engrossed in sin and Allah Almighty wants to forgive all of his sins, so he puts him in that tribulation. This is the hikmah, this is the wisdom of being put inside tribulation. There's a hikmah behind everything. So if you're one of the people that are in tribulation, Know that you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Abu al-Abbas al-Mursi rahimahullah, he says, if you are in a state of obedience, then do not, do not let your God down. Many people, they think I'm in a state of obedience. They look at other people. They may be sinning. They think I'm in obedience, so I will be rescued. Do not ever think if you are in a state of obedience that you will never turn to the dark side. Wallahi, it only takes one moment. One moment. There's a story, Allahu A'lam if it's true, I think it's Ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah, who narrates this, that there was a mu'adhin who gave adhan in Iraq, in Baghdad, for 40 years. For 40 years. And then, all of a sudden, one day when he was given the adhan, his gaze fell upon a Christian woman. And he saw her, and he went to her and he said, I want to fulfill my desires with you. And not long after, that same person died in that state. Forty years he was giving the adhan. Do not ever think if I'm in a state of obedience or I'm reading the Quran or I'm leading the prayers that I'm safe. It only takes one moment. And then Ibn al-Abbas al-Mursi, rahimahullah, he says, those who are in a state of disobedience, their way is tawbah and istighfar. Do not ever think that if you are in a state of disobedience, that I will never be in a state of obedience. Wallahi, it only takes one moment. There are some great scholars in the past like Fudayl ibn Iyad, Ibrahim ibn al-Adham, rahimahumullah. These are famous people that are accepted by the entire ummah. Once upon a time they were sinners. But read the biographies of their lives. It only took one moment. And not only did they become practicing Muslims, Allah Almighty made them from the awliyaullah. He made them from the salihin. Even if you're in a state of disobedience, do not ever think Allah Almighty will never take me out of this state of disobedience. In fact, Ibn Ata'illah says in the hikam, Man istaghraba ay yunqidahu Allahu Whoever thinks that Allah Almighty cannot take him out from his negligence, then this person, what has he done? He has belittled the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That same creator who has created the universe, who has created the heavens, who has created the earth, who has given you life, who will raise you back from the dead. Do you think that same creator cannot forgive you? The same one who has forgiven people before you, he can forgive you as well. And again, Ibn Ata'illah mentions in the Hikam, and this is a lesson for all of us who are going through these trials and tribulations and difficult times. He says, To take away that pain of tribulation from you, 
know that the one who's testing you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you're being tested and you don't know where to go, financially you're all over the place, family ties are all over the place, you're not consistent in your prayers, you're not, you keep on swearing for example, and you want to get rid of these trials and tribulations, then know one thing, the one who's testing you is the one who has made you. And he has made this dunya so that it can be a test from you. Many of us, we read Surah Mulk. What does he say in the second ayah? Who knows? He has created life and death only to test you. That's why he gives you these tribulations. He's testing you. Which one of you is the best in deeds? Allah Almighty, he says in Surah Al-Dahr, هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ هِنُمْ مِنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا إِنَّا خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ أَمْشَاجٍ نَبْتَلِي We have created the human being from a sperm drop. Why? نَبْتَلِي So that we can test it. That's it. When you think of your trials, when you think of your problems, when you think of suffering, then know that the one who's giving you all of this is the one who created you, Allah. And the one who can remove it from you is the one who gave it to you in the first place, Allah. And it's a very deep concept. But sometimes as Muslims, we can't be very simple people. We need to think deep down inside. That's why many people, when they become older, notice those of you who are in your 30s and 40s, you think about your youth and you understand. And you know that when I was young, I didn't understand. Islam is a religion of understanding. And wallahi, the one who understands when they're young, in their teen years or in their 20s, then he has been given a great deal of good. Allah Almighty says in the Quran, وَمَن يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةِ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا who has, Whoever has been given wisdom, then he has been given a great amount of good. Why? Because this person understands. He realizes. He knows the situation that he's in. He knows why he's in this world. My brothers and my sisters, many of you who are young, do not go past the age of 40 without realizing why you are here. Realize it now. Ask people who are elder than you. Have a conversation with them. Understand their life struggles. Know that as you embark on your journey in this dunya, that you will go through struggles. But do not ever think that, Ya Allah, I do not want any tribulations. Do not make this kind of dua. Make a dua that, Ya Allah, when I am given these tribulations, give me the strength to cope with these tribulations and make me die on Iman. And make me die pleased with you, happy with you, no matter what I go through. And ultimately, this is the message of Karbala, of Imam Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Again, we remember him and his family who were massacred on that day of Karbala. We remember the prophetic family who were examples of justice and patience and being pleased with the decree of Allah and connecting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. They are our role models. Again, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Husaynun minni wa ana min Husayn. Husayn is from me and I am from Husayn. Ahabba Allahu man ahabba Husayna. Allah loves the one who loves Husayn. Husaynun siptum min al asbat. Husayn is a nation from all of the nations. And the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, the ones who are trialed the most in this world are the Anbiya. And then after the Anbiya, the one who resembles them the most. And the whole Ummah has agreed that the biggest trial after the Anbiya was the trial of Imam Hussein alayhi salam at Karbala. So again, we will take time, we'll recite Surah Al-Fatiha, recite Surah Al-Ikhlas three times. May Allah Almighty reward everyone of you. Bismillah.